So when you tell awesome. someone that with tinnitus that you have to change your thoughts, they, that's not what they expect. They want a cure. They want yeah. to be. They want the, the the ringing to go away, the sound to go yeah. away. They don't want you yeah. to tell them, "Oh, please, yeah. uh, 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 help me change my thought." Hello and welcome, everyone, back to the Altering Tinnitus podcast. You just heard some quite some big words already at the start of the episode from uh, Mathieu. He's one of the founders of Tinibot. Today, I have both founders, Mathieu and Fabrice, on the Altering Tinnitus podcast. I interview them about how they got into hearing science, how they founded Tinibot, one of the best uh, tinnitus coaching uh, online apps that you can find on the App Store and on Android as well. Just as a little side note, if you're interested to see how I make the podcast, uh, click on the link in the description. There is a YouTube video where you can watch me making my uh, podcast. As usual, I'm always there for you if you need a free 15 minutes a tinnitus consultation. Go to outringtinnitus.com to book that or send me an email to frida at outringtinnitus.com. Now I wish you a lot of fun with uh, Mathieu and Fabrice from Tinibot on the Outring Tinnitus podcast. Hello and welcome to the Outring Tinnitus podcast. This is Frida and I'm your host. This podcast is all about the tinnitus science and what you can do to live a better life despite the ringing. Well, uh, then today I have uh, Fabrice and uh, Mathieu from Tinibot on the podcast. Um, I would like to uh, welcome those two very much. Hi Fabrice, hi Mathieu. Hi Fabrice. How are you guys doing? It's awesome to have you guys here. I'll give a, a very brief uh, introduction and uh, then I would like to uh, give the floor to you guys to uh, each introduce yourself so uh, the listeners can uh, find out a bit more about uh, uh, Tinibot and what you guys do. Um, yeah, Fabrice and Mathieu are um, uh, from Tinibot, which is a, a, a new tinnitus um, uh, related app, but I will let the two have the floor to explain that to you a bit uh, further in detail. Um, uh, they are first on the podcast here today, and uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy and excited to have them share their story with uh, how Tinibot came came alive and how the project came into existence, and uh, yeah, why I think it's also a great help for um, all you guys out there to um, uh, check it out as a tool, as an additional tool, or as a tool to um, uh, uh, yeah get get better with your tinnitus. Do you guys want to want to start yeah. with a with a with a quick introduction? Yeah, thanks a lot, Freda, for the invitation. Um, sure. It's great to be able to sort of like also um, uh, meet the audience and then uh, try to interact with you guys. Um, so to give you a little bit of background, uh, both Matthew and I are like uh, uh, we are hearing scientists have. I'm an audiologist, so I did the practice audiology for five years in the clinic before switching mm. to uh, research. And I've been doing like research for 12 years now in Australia and uh, New Zealand. And uh, basically, I met Matthew at the Australian Hearing Hub, where uh, Matthew was doing his PhD when I was working at the National Acoustic Laboratory. And uh, we have been uh, sort of like working together for uh, now a few years on a different project. And uh, in the last 18 months, we focus on uh, developing an application for uh, tinnitus sufferers. And we can basically talk a little bit more about how uh, this uh, um, has been uh, like evolving over, over the months. Um, so currently I'm in, uh, at, um, in, in Brisbane uh, and I'm conducting some, both conducting some research on uh, Tinibot. Uh, uh, was like in collaboration with the University of Auckland and with the University of Queensland, and uh, and basically I can give the now the chance for Matthew to introduce himself also. Yeah, yeah. great. So, uh, Thank you. Uh, okay, so I'm Matthew. I'm French as well. I um, I am a biomedical engineer by training. I studied uh, a little bit of in France. I uh, spent. Uh, about five, four years in the UK, and then I moved to Australia to do my PhD after having done a short stint at Otico Medical, uh, which was named Neuralec at the time, working in cochlear implant uh, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, I was there, a scientific engineer, and then 
Um, that's why I started my, my uh, journey in hearing research and, and uh, in the hearing world. I, am, um, I then did uh, study my PhD in, in, in London, but my supervisor moved to, to Sydney. So I followed him at Macquarie oh, University. Wow. And uh, yeah, and uh, that, was, that was pretty exciting. So that's where I conducted my PhD, finished a couple of years ago. And that's where I met Fabrice as well, at the Australian Hearing Hub. Um, and um, yeah, and I'm, I'm now partly also working at uh, uh, Macquarie University. I'm a research fellow there. I do research in cochlear implants and uh, modeling of cochlear implantation. So that's my, that's my, my job. <laughs> and then uh, we, wow. we do a uh, teeny bot as well with Fabrice. Yeah, amazing. Maybe you guys quickly want to share how you got into hearing. Like, why, why, why did it interest you, or, or how specifically? Also, I mean, the, probably a coincidence. You guys met each other and then found a Tinnybot. But how did you get into tinnitus and hearing research? Maybe, maybe your individual stories would be really nice to hear as well. That's actually the, the, yeah, that's a pretty interesting. So, uh, on on my side, like I had like an interest. I was doing music. Uh, I was a, mus a musician, like uh, playing in a band when I was young younger and so I always had an interest for uh, the auditory sense uh, and so basically I had like uh, one of my best friends where we basically were looking for like opportunity to um, career and then uh, we found um, the audiology um, education just a little bit by accident just by trying to find something that could be uh, linked to something that uh, we, we we like doing on our uh, in our free time, and so I engaged um, basically the way I, I didn't know what was an audiologist doing. So what I did is like I just um, call to uh, did uh, took the phone call and the audiologist of the town where I was living in in France and basically asked if I could come for a few days to see what they were doing. And so I spent like a week uh, in the center and then uh, following patient um, and uh, in the rehabilitation and I loved it. And so it's where basically I decided, yes, this is what I want to do. And so started the journey in France. And then after that, it's been like a few, uh, 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 so like, like the, the great thing is like, you can do so many things. Uh, you can start, uh, so I start as a clinician, but then uh, moved and work in, uh, in Denmark, in, um, uh, in hearing aid manufacturers. And so it's very different atmosphere and, uh, and a different test. And you basically, when you are doing some product development, then uh, move at the National Acoustic Lab, um, doing some research in electrophysiology, so neuroscience. And again, it was like a ice opening in the sense that you can, I was able to learn so many new things and that which really are fascinating. And mm -hmm. now with Matthew, I think it was like, it's another, um, in the, in another state in my career where we're trying to use technology to uh, bring care to uh, people who need it. And it's like, how can we basically, there's so many things that we can do this with the te technology that you have in your pocket. And it's, how can we basically transform this into uh, something that can provide support? And uh, as you said, like um, just in certain cases, it's not much that you need, but getting some reassurance, um, getting um, someone who is here uh, to basically to tell you some of the, uh, providing you some information, or like in the case of cognitive behavioral therapy, if we go a bit more there, like helping you to challenge some of your thoughts can be extremely yeah. helpful. And so it's um, with Matthew, I think we had this, um, uh, this patient about how to, uh, use technology to empower people. And so it's, I think it's like what we're trying to do. And uh, thanks for the people who have been on the journey with us, like how users have been incredibly helpful because it's them who guide us in terms of like pro creating the product. And if there's people listening to us who have been using Tinibot and who want to basically provide feedback, I think it's like, it's where our aspiration is, so like by listening to what people need and it's sort of like creating, creating something which yeah, uh, can, yeah. can be, uh, yeah. Helping. So, Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's basically, you basically go uh, also and look um, uh, like what do people need? How do they respond to it? And how can you make it better? How can you tailor it more individually to the people? And how can they really feel like 
you know, because of course, one of the first things is like, you want to know what's really going on with you. Why do you have this condition right now? And it happens to a lot of people and how exactly literally can you challenge negative uh, thought behaviors and patterns and then uh, replace them with other and more useful uh, thought patterns. But now I want to hear Mathieu's story. Yeah, ju just to, to uh, I think you just raised a super interesting point here. And I just wanted to say, um, it's super interesting because people usually have a different need that what clinicians and the solutions that are existing provide. And it's it's always left on the side. And we always yeah. kind of f uh, force feed these solutions to people that just don't understand that's what they need. And they just expect something else. So when you tell awesome. someone that with tinnitus that, you have to change your thoughts. They, that's not what they expect. They want a cure. They want yeah. to be. They want the, the the ringing to go away, the sound to go yeah. away. They don't want you yeah. to tell them, "Oh, please, yeah. uh, 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 help me change my thoughts." And and that's yeah. such such an integral part of the journey. And that's why Fabrice and I have done such a, a, a ground groundwork of trying to understand how can we make the people that are, that are using Tinibot and are, have been benefiting from it. Um, how can we transmit that to people that might be earlier in their journey, just still uh, grasping what 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 they can do about this this condition, and um, and uh, try to transfer that across um, our cohort of people that use the app? But I think I think we can come back to that. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's stick with that just for one second because this is so interesting and this is an amazing comment you just made. I found this is probably what I'm going to put in the introduction for this podcast episode because it's it's really really probably at the core of what all of this is about. So many people do not realize that the core of changing or, or, or uh, uh, improving tinnitus related anxiety is realizing that there's probably no uh, quick fix and no pill and no immediate cure to it for it, at least not at the moment, right? We'll see yeah. in future. But like, and this is one of the things like, I, I struggle with as a tinnitus coach, how do you go against all this anger, against all this annoyance, against all this like, oh, but I just want to get rid of it. You with your hocus pocus making me change my my thoughts around it. Like, like how can we, how can we, how can we take the wind out of people's sails and be like, calm down? Like, yeah. you know, this is part of the anxiety process. If you if you're exactly. able to realize that all this anger and all this appraisal is part of your of your reptilian part of your brain where the panic and, and fear yeah. and anger response and reactiveness is going on. And, and, you know, you see people getting stuck there for 20, 30 years. It's scary, man. It's scary. But how can we, how can, how can we address that? How, how are you guys addressing that? Mathieu, do you have, like, how do you so, address that? And then let's, so, and, let, and then let's go to your introduction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it's interesting because this, this insight comes from, um, work that I haven't, we haven't conducted, but we, we had like the um, understanding because of our, our users, the people that use Tinibot made us understand that through the way they behave and they interact with the app and the way and when, what they tell us. But that okay. that initial, like that, the way I formulated it really clearly was thanks to some work that was done by a, a master's thesis student at Macquarie University that was uh, overseen by jo uh, John Newell, uh, who has been doing some uh, some more continuities as well here in Sydney. And, and basically the, the, it was a simple survey that was sent to I think 80 audiologists providing tinnitus care and probably 150 or 200 tinnitus sufferers asking them, mm. what do you need? What, what is the thing that you think uh, is gonna help tinnitus sufferers the most? Or what, what do you think is gonna be the thing that helps you the most? And looking at the answers to these two things on the two sides of, the, of that equation, because audiologists are part of it and tinnitus sufferers are the other side of it. And, and understanding the, the gap in between, like the mismatch between what one yeah. side thinks and the other yeah. side thinks is where we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to do a lot of work to bring those two things together, helping audiologists understand how to explain to people that might not be expecting that answer to uh, appreciate and, 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 and formulate their needs differently to benefit from the solutions that we, we build because we know they're the best solutions mm -hmm. for them. And that's, that's so tricky. That's, so, that's, that's a very big problem. And I think that's why uh, we were, we were, Fabrice and I were very uh, passionate about it because we saw that there was this thing that everyone kind of looks at it, everyone tries to think about it, but no one really um, tries to tackle in a meaningful way and that, that can make a difference. So that's why, that's why we got uh, really uh, into it, I guess. 
Yeah, awesome. I, I wanted to, I just wanted to stick the foot there in the door because this is one of the biggest problems I have myself. For you guys, you have a team, you have you two, you have the Tinder bot that's a bit less personal. For me, it's, you know, I uh, I get these comment, I get these commentaries on, on YouTube, I get them on Facebook. It's like, oh, what do you say is bullshit? Just give me a cure. I can't deal with this. And like, you know, like I get all this stuff directed directly at me, you know? So it's like, sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit tricky. And I, 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 I must honestly say there were times where I told my wife like i don't want to I, i can't do this anymore but then i was like no man I, i i don't give up that simple i i i just have to i just have to not take it personal of course not i i'm not supposed to take it personal because it's not the anger and the the fear and the anxiety is not directed at me it's it's from the person themselves i i totally know that 100 but it's still difficult you know if you like out of out of out of 20 messages you get like two or three messages that are like Oh, what you do is hocus pocus, leave people alone with this. And you know, like I'm, I'm not even making enough money for my living and everyone you know, knows that, you know, but you know, but you know what, Frida, you should, you should try and use a tiny bot to challenge your thoughts and uh, bring back positivity. <laughs> <in your life. laughs> yeah, I should. Yeah, definitely. Very nice. But now, but now I want to hear about you much. Like how did you get into all of this? Well, it's, I think it's a three part question um, that I will try to answer the best possible. So, How, how did I get it? Like, how did I know about hearing and, and the, the, um, the, the problem that hearing is in general, hearing loss and, and the conditions that are related to hearing loss. So I think, I think it comes from when I was younger, my grandma, exactly like you, mm -hmm. has a unilateral hearing loss. Um, is actually deafness. She's been deaf for the past 30 years or 35 years and has had uh, tinnitus uh, with it. So it, it's been always interesting to me that from the beginning everyone told her like there's not much you can do and so even if she was actually actually deaf like profoundly uh profoundly um as a profound hearing loss mm -hmm. she only had like a, a hearing aid that had no effect at all and had these mm -hmm. really uh distressful tinnitus and and for a long time uh she just like coped with it by herself and and um, never really heard about it and And you know, I, I was young. Um, I was I didn't know what I know today, so no one really helped her on the on the journey. Um, if if I was to go back with my knowledge now, I would uh, get a cochlear implant, and and just uh, get away with it, right? And and it's just uh, it's just for her that would have made sense with what we know today. But 30 years ago, that it wasn't an option. So it's just it's just like that. That's how I kind of got the connection, the first connection to hearing loss and, and hearing conditions. Later, what happened is through my biomedical engineering training, um, I, I, I got more interested in, in medical and hearing and healthcare. And, and um, after that, after my master's, I, wa I wanted to do tissue engineering and uh, do a PhD in tissue engineering, which has nothing to do with hearing but I couldn't find a position. So um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, my uncle, who was working at Otico Medical at the time, said, well, why are you waiting for something to, uh, to open up and, and an option for you to go uh, do some tissue engineering? Why don't you do like an internship with, uh, with me at uh, Otico Medical? And, and that's what I did. So that's how I discovered um, cochlear implants. That's how I discovered the hearing world and, and how interesting and, and complex, but at the same time, uh, community-based and, and uh, understanding um, well the, it is. And, and that's how I fell in love with, with hearing and hearing loss and, and uh, the therapies that go with it. And then how I got into tinnitus, uh, apart from that connection, how, how Fabrice and I got into trying to solve this issue is really like when we started working together, we did a bit of consulting, we did a few projects um, through, through our company, Hearing Power, and, and we just... Uh, we just uh, realized that there was this, this huge amount of people that were looking for some solutions for tinnitus. Mm. And the answer mm. was always the same. There's mm. nothing you can do if you don't have a hearing loss. And I, mm. Fabrice and I thought for a while, like, this is ridiculous. Like, there must be a way to help these people in, 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 this, yeah. in, a, in a useful and meaningful way. And that's when, that's when it started. That's when we, we kind of uh, said, oh, let's, let's put a grant application in and, and get started with this. So that's, that's, that's how we got into it. I love it how you both have very, very, like your story with your grandma is a very emotional story. I like, I, I hear that that's, that's a very emotional reasoning to, to get into a field and yeah. Um, sad But it's story interesting, as well. it, it's interesting um, because you, 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 you never really connect the dots until you go back and look at it like from like 
times like today where you just like, how did we get here? And it's just like, would I have done all the choices I've done? Would I have been so passionate about it as I am uh, if it wasn't for my for my con my deeper connections? Maybe not. I wouldn't be that passionate because we I've done yeah. uh, Fabrice and I have done like entrepreneurship projects before that weren't maybe as connected <laughs> emotionally, and it's just not the same. You don't have the same drive yeah. and the same passion to go uh, go the journey. So it's just like probably that that connection that helps us in the long term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in order to stick with a project, right, and to make it work, and to put in all the all the all the tedious hours and all the, the the steps to make it also a beautiful product for people to use and to help them and to also make it sort of your your little baby that you that you just want to put all this focus work and effort into you you do definitely need some kind of some kind of reasoning right so so we're we're actually lucky that uh, your uncle gave you that internship and that we actually that you actually got stuck in the in the hearing industry basically so uh, uh thanks yeah, I, I think your uncle I here. think don't don't take don't don't give him too much credit but i think i think he's uh he's done yeah. the, he, he, he was there when i needed him to be so it's it's uh good on him and uh yeah yeah and fabrice for you like i also really liked uh, it was it for you was it the connection with the people who came to the to the to the audiologist office uh, once in a while and they were really helping them at that local place in france where you said when you when you were uh, younger? so um uh, like the this also like on the, so the connection. So from the an audiology point of view, like when I started working the clinics, um, like you see, there's a lot of people who have tinnitus and then you're going to, um, as Matthew was telling uh, or, or saying earlier, uh, most of the time when you are an audiologist, you are basically uh, doing hearing testing when the person is having a, and if they have a hearing loss and you're going to propose like a hearing aid, we are trained to provide some counseling, uh, but mm. I have the feeling that when I was, and probably younger, um, uh, interestingly, like I did not feel that I was equipped to provide emotional counseling uh, in certain situation. Uh, but so it's, uh, you go back into potentially like a technical solution, which is like saying, oh, let's try a hearing aid and in 50, 60% of the case is going to be an improvement. And um, it's basically what happened. So you 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 talk, but I, I was in many cases felt that I didn't was equipped um, to basically uh, answer or like help the the, the people I saw in the clinic. What happened is like ten years ago or like um, 2006 or 14 years ago, my my dad fell from a tree, and he had a head trauma and developed a relatively uh, severe tinnitus. And it's probably what also like you, like this personal connection made me realize that um, so no no hearing loss in this case but just a tinnitus and it was relatively distressing and probably there where you realize that what you don't know and so started looking to more solution and and trying to go deeper and you know it's your dad you want to sort of be here and you are an audiologist and you should know about and so you, I started to look a bit more about what would be uh, option so uh trt but then it was, uh, came through like understanding a bit more about what cbt is and what i found in many cases you know that cbt is available but it's um, you are not trained as an audiologist I, I was not trained um and so and most of the time you want to refer your patient to like let's say someone in town a psychologist but it's extremely hard to find like someone who knows about both cbt or and um and tinnitus and so i always got this frustration in every country where i've been uh, working switzerland denmark australia that it's extremely hard for patient to navigate and found the person who basically can provide you with the appropriate care and so the idea is like, how can we, when we, when we started, can we develop and use um, artificial intelligence, natural language processing and, and different uh, digital tools that could be um, helpful, like uh, something that it's potentially, so it could be helpful directly for the, the person who are, has distress or has tinnitus with this, uh, with distress by the tinnitus, but also helpful for the audiologists when they are not exactly sure about providing um, CBTs and they can have like a tool that they can give to their uh, to their patients. And this tool can basically give you some resources 
to um, uh, understand better uh, uh, what, what is the condition, but also um, uh, on the psychological level, trying to see if there's like step by step teaching you and helping you to understand your feeling, your thoughts, and and, and so on. So. Uh, Yes, yeah, so like it's 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 sort of like the the, the story, but I can imagine the, the what happened to my dad was also like a trigger for me to sort of like uh, go further and trying to understand uh, more about what the solution are, what is working, mm. and it's it's where basically I sort of like um, I'd been interested about uh, cognitive mm. behavioral therapy, mindfulness, and uh, and and sound therapy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you in the app? I'm I'm very curious because I I mean, so one of the things is people can uh, find you just when they Google Tinibot. Um, I think it's available on iOS and Android, right? Both both of the, the, the stores. That's correct. Okay, so they can go uh, uh, either on Google search for it or go to iOS uh, the the App Store or the uh, Play Store on uh, Google Android, and there I've seen that you give out a free trial for the first couple of days, which I think is very very helpful to to, to determine whether you can actually benefit from it and whether it does really help you. And as soon as you have done these days, there's a really valid valid um, and and really 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 good uh, uh, pricing model that you guys have adopted that I think is like. Because if you compare, for example, in the US, people come continuously tell me if I do a CBT session, Tinnitus focused CBT session, uh, they charge me $180 per hour. And I'm like, wow, that, that, that's a lot of money. That, that is a lot of money. Like, you know, this is, this is mostly the, the average kind of people who suffer from distressing tinnitus are usually not bankers and investment bankers because they just, you know, they just pull through. They're like, okay, I've got something here, but I don't mind. Like I just continue my life, you know? And it's like, probably it's, you know, because tinnitus is always a few things come, right? Like it's often that you don't only have the hearing exposure and then the tinnitus and it's get very distressing, but sometimes there's a few events in your life that lead up to something and then it tumbles and then, or there was, there were probably already, um, uh, difficult uh, things happening in your life and then suddenly the tinnitus distress increases quite a lot and 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 how do you how do you how do you, how do you position that when someone someone hasn't heard about tinnitus before or uh, hasn't uh, uh, gotten uh, 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 traction on tinnitus but yet how do you how do you get that entry level how do you get that entry level how do you get that bar down to uh, sort of uh, talk to people how did you how did you develop that also uh, with a bot that that is something that i find very interesting because it's, i think you need that first first instantaneous connection that you trust that app and the people and how 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 can how can people really feel at ease and and, and trust it when they when they open the Tinibot app and they're like the first three days, okay, let's go, I'm getting better with this. Well, uh, do you want to take that one, Fabrice? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I think you asked a lot of good questions here, Frida. It's it's super, super complex question to unpack, but I'll, I'll try to give it a go and, and uh, Fabrice can come and jump in and to help me. I think, awesome. I think um, so to begin, so Tinibot is available on, on uh, Apple and Android. Um, it's a freemium model we, we, we're trying to, to use. So the app is downloadable for free. You can use, the, you can download the app. And as you said, have some experience about um, the soundscapes. So the, we have some three uh, soundscapes in the app at the moment, and um, they are available all the time for free uh, for, to anyone that downloads the app and signs up. We have the journaling tools. So these are uh, cognitive behavioral um, therapy tools mm -hmm. that are available for free as well. So the journaling and the check thoughts. Um, so this, this is the tools that help you reinforce the positive in your life and challenge your negative uh, perspective on your tinnitus. And then we have also um, a few modules, as you were mentioning, that help you get the understanding of what Tinibot does, which is basically delivering through a, a chat interface, like you will be talking to a friend. Um, you have an engaging conversation with a Tinibot, which is um, uh, an entity that exists in the cloud and, and just provides you with this uh, expert information on tinnitus. And, and as you said, like, how, how, how is it like, how can you make the conversation realistic and, and, uh, and make people engage in the, in the same way? You can't, it's not possible. Sorry, that's my dog in the background. But uh, it is, you, you can't really make that happen for everyone with the same, uh, with the same tone of conversation, with the same 
type of information because people are different and they have different needs. Tinnitus sufferers have different needs as well. Like every every tinnitus is different. Every person is different. The anxiety, the causes of anxiety and depression are different. So you just, the best you can do is try to make a good job at caring for as many people as possible by providing the broadest kind of information with the, the gentlest uh, conversations but at the same time being uh, an expert, like we curate the content, we create the content ourselves and curate what we say and what we, we, we tell people because it is at the end of the day, what makes the, the, the therapies uh, uh, work. It's, it's the information we provide. It is the, the cognitive behavioral therapy that we provide in a, content, in a, in a chat um, based uh, manner. And that's the delivery method that where we can engage with images, videos, and podcasts where we can provide meditation um, tools as well. And I nice. think I think that's 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 really much the the what started this as well. Like the realistic um, implementation of an expert in a chat is how you can realize how you can engage with as many people as possible in a scalable and at the same time preserve the quality of the therapy you, you deliver, right? And, and, and try to really um, tackle as many people as, as possible without having the limitation of being a single human being in an, in an office somewhere. And, and that's, that's really what we're trying to do. Maybe I, I can uh, add um, a, a little thing. I think like we are, like, we are learning uh, like every day also. And then uh, as Matthew said, like we want uh, in the initial version, um, we have been able to try to address and being able to listen, like using the chat, but hey, trying to listen is extremely important and being able for the chat to be able to listen to the people, what they have to say. And um, not saying that we're doing everything right, but and we want to sort of like continue in this, in this progression. We have um, done two clinical trials. So one in collaboration with the University of Leeds Trinity in the UK. And we had one uh, qualitative component and a quantity, uh, we have, sorry, a, a qualitative and a quantitative component. Uh, one of the very interesting comments we had in the qualitative uh, component was the tone of the voice of the chatbots um, is differently appreciated depending to the age range so of the of the group. So we are learning like, uh, on, on, uh, like we are learning and we are adjusting. It means like, not everybody's, someone would might want to talk to Dr. Tinibot and might want to get like a formal um, conversation, something where there's like facts, um, uh, very relatively serious. And I can imagine, so I was thinking about myself when I, I was in the clinic, makes sense. I was adapting my voice, depending to the person who was talking to me. This, with certain people, you will potentially get like a, you would not talk differently. You potentially uh, so, and as this is some of the things that we are starting to basically implement. So how can we sort of change the voice of Tinibot depending to the liking or the need of the person? Can we make it like uh, uh, introduce be more friendly, um, more light, if you want, formal. or formal? And so yeah, and and different people, different needs. Uh, so like it's uh, it's about us using the chat interface, how can we capture this information and respond back appropriately? It's a, it's a, real, it, it's a real challenge, but it's a very exciting challenge, I think. And, and I think also just to finish on, on, uh, on Fabrice's point and, and uh, uh, because it's created some thoughts in my mind, but it's just, we, we, we are building on the, the shoulders of giants here because we are in a world now today, like people are expecting like everything to be digital database, like based on data and, and good decisions. And ex especially in healthcare, the trend is that things are becoming more personalized, more adapted mm. to people and more uh, self self um, delivered. And, and that's really what we're trying to do here. Something that can adapt to your needs based on your own challenges, your own goals, what do you want to achieve with your tinnitus in terms of, of uh, uh, living a better life having a more relaxed day, concentrating yeah. better and sleeping well. And, that, and, and it, depending on those, we will be able to adapt the content that we deliver to you because we know which one is gonna, is gonna be the most beneficial at, at any point in the yeah. day. And, and, and eventually that's what we will do, but it's, it's, a, it's a long journey there. And, uh, but yeah. we, we, that's what we're doing and uh, it's really exciting. I love it, it's great because 
I, I, I hadn't thought about that in the context of the app, but of course, like I automatically do it, right? Like different people I coach have completely different needs. One of the first things I do is I, I send them a first um, a questionnaire, right? And then they have to fill in all my individual questions. And in this, in the first session, we, we set up another questionnaire. So an individual questionnaire for every day. And then we make like a five-step action plan and we identify different areas. So I ask this different questions. So for example, what would you do if you didn't have tinnitus or in what situations do, do you behave differently now than compared to before? And then we, so in this, in this way, we identify individual areas that we want to work on, right? But of course, these are different for every single person and you don't realize unless you, unless you get that feedback from the people as well. And that's, that's, right. wow, that's very, that's very cool that you guys are tailoring that, um, that, that the technology is there already for, for individually tailoring that to the, to the, to the people and to, to, uh, to every, to everyone. Um, I wanted to ask uh, something uh, related to uh, the content of the app. You said also you use a, a journaling tool as well. Could you elaborate on that a bit more? Because I think the journaling and um, I know that it's, uh, you know, a lot of people, they uh, don't keep up with the journals because they're like, oh, I'm too tired to do that right now. But could you please, um, from your point of view, also from the app and the technological perspective, say for my listeners why this is so important, because I always tell them as well. Do you, um, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, I think like gratitude a journal has been shown. There's like multiple um, study. The research is pretty clear in terms of how beneficial it can be just to acknowledge um, the positive things that are happening in your life. And it's really about um, stopping, pausing, being able to like make uh, take some time for yourself and being able to sort of appreciate what is around you. And we are, especially in, in nowadays, like we are on a high speed all the time, things, uh, we open a web page and then another, and then and we do another task and we are multitasking. So just being able to take a break and to write down like three of the things that you have been that have been positive in your life today is like and and uh, it, it's just like amazing how um i can change your perception and so suddenly you can um realize that and it's what we so the journaling we have a, like a small calendar and with this little smiley face depending about how your day has been and then oh, nice. yeah. uh, mm -hmm. most most of the time like when i've been like uh, in communication with the uh, the patient the participant the user of the teeny bot they came to me and say oh, okay actually i was thinking that my week had been very bad but when i look back it was actually just this little thing which was bad and so you're sort of starting realizing that it's not that bad. It's just one thing that on Thursdays that you had this bad moment and then you, but the rest of the week actually went pretty nicely. And then you can sort of have a representation of that and go back into your thinking. So this, uh, we have also like, a, uh, so if you open the app and you will basically have a cut, which sort of like, and it's really about sort of um, reminding you about, uh, and all the, like yeah all the positive side which are in your life and it can take just five minutes but it's also a possibility for you to take a break take some time for yourself and just say yes uh let's reflect and 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 and, and take this break and uh, i just i would not encourage and you can do that at home you don't need to have teeny but you teeny but is great because it keeps track and then you can look back and then but you can just take a piece of paper if you at home and if you don't want to and, and, and try to write three thing, three things that have been uh, positive during your day and try to do that for a few days. And just doing that can be like extremely helpful and can Game just changer. change it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What really makes it powerful, I think, um, to, to just uh, like add something to what the great answer from Fabrice is, the fact, um, and it's it's probably a bit more the technical side, and 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 the kind of cohort that will respond better to to solutions like Tinibot. In in some cases, and and I mean I've been there myself. I don't have tinnitus myself, but I I've been in places where you are so so anxious, so stressed, and sometimes a bit depressed, and and you just see the negative in everything. 
So you won't go the extra mile to think about the great things that were during the day. But if someone, a friend of, of yours or someone you know comes and asks you every day, how are you doing? How, how was your day? What's happening? You're more inclined to think about it, right? And so that's what Tinibot does essentially. It's your friend that comes and knocks on the door or call, gives you a ring or uh, sends in a text. And, and just with a notification, we can make a difference because within that notification, even if you don't do the exercise, you're going to think about reading it and you're going to think about, oh, what would I have I answered? And and that that in itself is just enough for you to feel a little bit better at that exact, exact um, point in time. And then when you think about, the, if you take a step back and you think about CBT at its core, it's about putting things in perspective and trying to break either the vicious circle and, 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 and make everything into a virtual circle because you reinforce what's going great in your life and you put everything that is negative into perspective and you try to, to relax and think about it and not react to everything, but rather you, you, can, you become kind of a passenger of your life and you, can, you control the, your, the will, but it's not everything is happening to you. It's just things that happen on the journey. And, and, and that's, that's, I think, the power of, of CBT and Tinibot just em, empowers that even further by creating the right in, in environments to ask you the right question at the right time and provide you with the chance to do these exercises that you wouldn't if you were by yourself because you might be a bit too depressed or not engaged enough. Yeah, great. I I so appreciate and 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 like um, how new technologies also step on the train of or step on the train sounds a bit negative, but but of of being more mindful, you know, in, in your life because what we all do and it's a normal normal survival mechanism. Our reptilian part of the brain focuses on the negative things because we try to get rid of them, right? But if you try to get rid of them too much and you focus too much on them, then there is no space to remember the positive things. And then you're like, you know what? Actually, my life is not so bad. I'm not sitting in a in a in a in a refugee camp in Moria and have just lost half of my family. And I'm not sitting in Yemen, not having food for my children while the half of my family is starving. So and I, I'm dealing with this tinnitus problem. But if I look at the rest of my life, it's actually pretty OK. I've got a family. I've got I've got a decent job. Maybe I'm not a billionaire, but I, I have everything I need. And 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 that's basically quite OK. And now, of course, there's bad moments. But if I if I and that's that's what I love. What you said, Mathieu, is like with a with a flick of the notification, you flick on this questioning part of your brain and you're like, wait a second. You know, and that that's that's a that's a that's a that's that's a powerful tool not to use technology in a in a good way and not in a way that you look on Instagram and you get jealous about all the um, bikini and uh, and uh, uh, shorts models that are have the optimal body, have the great lifestyle despite COVID and all of this and and you maybe maybe, use technology maybe someday for good. maybe someday you can show us your your collection of bikinis, Frida. <laughs> yeah, I will. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, maybe you'll get jealous though. Um, uh, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate that. And that, that's a very, very useful way to use technology in order to, to trigger people to constantly remind themselves. And this is something a coach can't do. You know, I can't, I can't ring up all, all my clients every day and be like, and, 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 and be like, Hey, how, how, you, how was your day today? Because I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's a limit. Like you have to, you have to encourage that behavior. And I, I guess that people, once they, once they adopt that uh, behavior with uh, the Tinnibot. So at some point they will probably stick to it and, and automatically at the end of the day, go like, what was positive today? And if Tinnibot helped them do that, then wow, that's, that's a very, very, very nice uh, uh, thing to achieve. And all right. Um, yeah. Next question that I have is always a big one because um, we're talking to scientists here. Fabrice and Mathieu are both uh, scientists. And uh, that's, of course, why Tinnibot is founded on uh, scientific pillars. And uh, what I always try to uh, make people understand is why does, for example, cognitive behavioral therapy or also acceptance and commitment, which I also sometimes use because I like that a lot, um, uh, and, and meditation and um, uh, uh, mindfulness, how, how can these things scientifically um, uh, uh, help you to uh, really get better in many areas that cause distress, for example, sleeping or concentration. And I always constantly try to tell people that these things actually do work. If they look at the research, it's proven that these things work. But in a, from a perspective of tin, to, to, uh, Tinibot, sorry, how did you guys uh, put all of this in one boat and actually do make it work on a scientific basis? Because I think that's one of the first app and uh, that combines all of these factors into um, a, a scientific um, a, a scientific model of technology. Technology, so to say. 
Matthew, do you want to start or like? Yeah, I, I can I can just go. So Fabrice is is the senior researcher here, so he will he will uh, intense us with his uh, knowledge after maybe. But uh, I, I can just say how how my vision of of how we build Thinkbot is um, is putting uh, in perspective when we talk about the, the the therapies, and and I love the word you use, Frida, uh, the pillars. It is really what what we do. If you take away the the nice designs, if you take away the technology and the chat, really it's about the four pillars of the therapy that we it, we, we use. It is proven, it is evidence that using information, making people understand more about the condition, the, the how, where it comes from, what causes it, what and all and teaching you about the therapies and the different ways you can deal with it will make you in control of the condition and will help you uh, regain a sense of, of, uh, of control in your life. And that's, that's going to create, go, make you help you go back on that uh, virtual circle we were talking about before. The second pillar that we use is uh, obviously cognitive behavioral therapy. So CBT has been used for uh, pretty much everything and anything related to psychological issues. It's used for um, the bowel syndrome, it's used for um, anxiety, so generic anxiety, generic depression, all these different things benefit from, from CBT because it's a simple set of tools that when you understand them, you can use, it, use them across your entire life and change all the, the, the your perspective on everything you, you come across. And so CBT helps you change uh, in the context of Tinibot helps you change the way that you perceive the constant noise, the constant ringing, and, and makes you have a better life with it and reduce the stress levels, the anxiety and the depression that is related to your, your tinnitus. The third thing we use is uh, sound therapy. Sound therapy is probably the most used therapy for, for tinnitus out there because of the yeah. different apps. Everyone has a sound therapy app. Everyone is, that has tinnitus has a sound therapy app in their phone. And, and even some people that don't use them for concentration, it's nice to have a background noise in your when you're working. Some people love it. I don't personally like that, but some people do. And and, and that's, Neither that's great. I. Yeah. <laughs> I, prefer my ten, I prefer my tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well that's that's your choice but i mean it's it's just out there and people know that because it's promoted by uh, gps it's promoted by ents it's the most yeah. well-known therapy for tinnitus and what is evi the evidence behind that sound therapy might not be that it relieves the sound uh, over time but it does actually relieve the sound temporarily and that what that does it's not a cure, but it helps you for a moment, relax and feel better. And that will help you sleep or concentrate or do things that you like that will help us in general feel better and in the long run, uh, re augment again that virtual circle. The, the final one is really probably the, the oldest one as well. It's meditation. Meditation has been around for millennia for good reason. It's just like the simplest way to make you relax and feel good about yourself and have a sense of self. Focus on you and, and just rewire the entire brain. And that's that's things that are out there. And you can just um, by, foc by breathing, by having breathing exercises, body scans, you can really take a moment in your day to calm the stress and, and have a greater sense of self. Again, promoting uh, this vir virtual circle. And that's, that's really much, if you take away all the, 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 the technology side and the, the app and the digital uh, notification, that's what Tinibot is about. Helping people concentrate, feel better, sleep better, and just be more relaxed in general and less stressed. That's what that's what we want to do. Awesome. That's pretty much. I, I love it how we um, are very, very similar. I would probably never be able to reach as many people as you will through Tinibot, but uh, that's exactly the, the the pillars that I also use in 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 my coaching because these are mostly the areas that are affected, right? So I've been using meditation myself for a few years. Um, I often get the question that it's quite difficult to meditate with tinnitus. Um, I, um, I, I experienced that myself, but um, I, I, I meditate every day. Um, I, instead of taking a nap, I uh, meditate after lunch because that oh. sort of like, it, feel, it feels like it just resets your brain, right? When you get that after lunch tiredness, you do a meditation and it feels like your, your brain is like in the morning. It, it flicks on differently again. So I really enjoy that. But uh, Fabrice, I would like to hear your part of the answer now. No, yes. Um, so as um, to, to complement a little bit of what Matt, you said, like, 
we know that all these four pillars have been effective as the research has shown like in um, that effectiveness uh, and now like our mission and is to basically as you say to try to try to deliver um, this um, therapy or treatment in a digital way or like in a, in a way that it can reach um, the largest number of people and we still need so like our, our mission was still to validate actually the implementation and it's why we have been sort of like conducting the, the clinical trial is to basically see when um, as the therapy is provided in the context of a chatbot how basically the what are the results and is it effective um, is it helpful? What like what has a limitation? And it's what we have been trying to uh, uh, answer, and that we're going to continue answering. Um, another element that we uh, think is important: this Tinibot with this chatbot. But we are also thinking that um, Tinibot can work in collaboration with a therapist, with a coach, or, or with a psychologist uh, or an audiologist. And the idea here, we did a clinical trial in, uh, in, in Oakland where we basically tried to look at the difference between a group who was only receiving Tinibot and another group was receiving Tinibot plus uh, video consultation with uh, a coach. And uh, as you said, uh, you said earlier, Fredo, you can't be here every day, like what tell the, but so it's in a digital way, Tinibot would potentially be helpful for um, a coach to basically provide the treatment to, to the patient. And so um, we don't, we, we really see the technology to be able to augment um, possibilities and then to create new ways to provide therapies. And it means um, integrating this tool in, um, in your suite of tools that you can have could basically make that the effectiveness of the therapy is, 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 is higher, basically. And it's what we sort of are, are on the way to uh, demonstrate or on the way to, um, uh, to, 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 uh, to study. And uh, to, like we have like uh, the preliminary result of the studies that we have are showing that is going in this direction. There's still more uh, studies that we want to complete. At this stage, we have like, um, we call uh, some feasibility study, which were conducted. Uh, once the feasibility is conducted, like now we are thinking to have a, a larger um, of basically uh, some study which uh, a larger number, a sample size, more people involved to really and potentially also try to see the efficacy in different country. Uh, we acknowledge that culture can basically make that uh, use. So we talked earlier about age makes that you might want to basically hear the, the, the way to provide the therapy might be dif different. And, and, and we are um, challenging the fact that uh, providing the therapy in the UK or in New Zealand or in Australia might be slightly different. And so we, mm. might, we want to understand in the future if the effectiveness of the treatment is similar in different country in different, different population. Um, the, 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 this tool also as a, as a research tool is extremely powerful in the sense that it allows to collect um, a large number of data. When you are a scientist, you yeah. always uh, rely on a statistical power, yeah. like you want to compare different things, but you have a limitation in terms of how many, num what is an, how many people can test one condition. And so it's, um, we are figuring out that being able to have like a, a digital tool like Tinibot will potentially allow to progress um, also on the scientific uh, side, like being able to understand what's happening using much larger numbers than what, what was possible in the past. And um, a last thing maybe on the, um, in the future that we, um, that we would like to do is like, uh, uh, I've been doing like my research in electrophysiology. So it's like uh, objective measure, trying to understand brain responses. And we want to understand so many things that we don't understand yet about the impact of the therapy on like brain functions. And so um, oh. this is like also like I think a, a topic that we are really passionate about. And it means like, how can we follow these like um, devices that are accessible. Uh, so we have like uh, recording equipment in the lab, which are ex pretty expensive, 
which are providing precise measurements and that are extremely good. But um, there's also possibility here to um, expand this like and, and, and use consumer electronic potentially that measure brain waves, like introducing new paradigm. Uh, neural feedback and then this paradigm were extremely hard to test because of the complexity of having to bring mm. people in the lab and making them having mm. a therapy to control uh, all these mm. factors um, this very um, it, it, like it, it brings like so many new options um, and for us to explore uh, new treatment options um, in the future and um, and and also monitor um, potential monitor like different treatment options. So um, yeah, so it gives you a test a little bit of where we are. We have like, um, we have like uh, the, the first version of Tinibot. We have a lot of ideas about how this could basically evolve. Let's see how now like um, the, the possibility are nearly infinite basically. And, and it's, it's, it's what, what a great time to be able to, to develop new, uh, New new technology and 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 for the for the like always having in mind that this technology can uh, be helpful for the people who are using them. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm uh, yeah. Get a little little goosebumpy here. I'm, I'm very excited to see what you guys um, are up to in the future. It's um it's yeah. I, I want to thank you uh, both again for uh, putting all this effort, work, and and committing your lifetime into this because. Um, it's it's really as you said it's 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 by the people and for the people and what technology can do these days is uh, very very amazing. Uh, yeah, we we already said to people where they can find you. I'll put the links to um, everything and how people can find uh, Tinibot in the uh, show notes as well. And um, anything else you guys uh, want to advertise, add, or uh, 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 let the people who listen to this podcast uh, know. It's uh, really nice of you to have us, and it was great. Talking, talking to you and, and hopefully um, we can reach a, a few people uh, from, from your community to, to get and test the app. Please reach out to us and, and don't hesitate to, to let us know what you think about what we do. And, and we always like to engage with, with the community and the Tinibot users. It's super important for us. And uh, you can find us also on hearingpower.co, uh, if I didn't mention it before, which is our, our actual brand. So Tinibot is developed by Hearing Power. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's us. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Freda, for inviting us. Like, and uh, yeah, I hope that we can continue this discussion at, uh, um, yeah, at other time. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, so this was the podcast episode with uh, Mathieu and Fabrice from Tinibut. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As usual, for questions or a free 15 minutes coaching session, send an email to freedatartrington.com. Uh, Fabrice and Mathieu have let me know after the interview that they will be able to provide uh, discount codes um, for a Tinibot. Uh, for now, please, if you're interested in one of the discount codes for using Tinibot, uh, send me an email to frida at arteringtinnitus.com and I will you, provide you with the uh, discount code and you can try the app. You can always try the app for free for a couple of days anyways. So just go to the uh, App Store or on Android, the Play Store and look for Tinibot. That's 2N Tinibot. And uh, yeah, I can really recommend. Check it out. Um, see how that goes uh, for all other questions also regarding this podcast if you if you have feedback for me if you have wishes uh, for who else to uh, interview on this podcast um, I'm very happy to to take those um, I wish you all happy healthy and uh, safe uh, e Easter holidays now we certainly do have a few time few days of, of Easter holidays here in Germany um, uh, be safe everyone um, uh, stay clear of uh, COVID and uh, yeah, I wish you all the best. Uh, again, mentioning that if you are interested in how I'm shooting this podcast in the description to this episode, you'll find the link to the YouTube video on how I produce the podcast. Uh, all other information can be found on arteringtinnitus.com. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Wishing you all the best. And until then, goodbye. Thank you very much for listening to the Outring Tinnitus podcast. I am looking forward to also welcome you on my website at outringtinnitus.com 
or if you have any questions, please mail to frida at See you next time.